I need to go somewhere. I need to go somewhere. Now, will you take me somewhere now? Where were you thinking? <laughs> somewhere out there. I mean, we could go in a car, like a really fucking cool car, and, a, and really hit the road like fucking Bonnie and Clyde, like Thelma and Louise. Uh, where are you going to get a car from? <laughs> well, we could nick one. I mean, I bet that we could nick one dead easy. Have you ever stolen a car before, well, We could steal <laughs> a car and we could go to Brussels. Go to Amsterdam and get some proper drugs and keep going. Go to Berlin. Go to Moscow. Ooh. Why the fuck would you go to Moscow for? <laughs> uh, fuck a Cossack. <laughs> Give a secret handjob to a KGB <laughs> operative. What the actual fuck are you talking about? Honestly? Honestly? I have no idea. I didn't think you did. We are not like them. Me and you. Which means that you'll never leave me, will you? Will you, Andy? Fucking hell. Uh, yeah, I knew it. Knew what? Is that why you won't fuck me here? Oh. Hey, is that, is that what you've come here for? To, to tell me that you're leaving? Jesus Christ. Is it somebody else? What? what like, am I not enough being out Please. with Have you outgrown Stephen? me? Stephen! Are you sick? Don't! Have I whinging about my shittiness and my exams? Am I too stupid for you? No. I am. No. I am. No. <laughs> I'm just... I oh, know. Unbelievably sad. And a little bit terrified because I'm starting to realise that I'm something I always thought I never was. And I have no idea what I'm going to do about it. What is it? Is it the sex? Fuck off. Is it, is it my body? Please. What, do I disgust you when you look at me? Is that it? Yeah, just push your drinks around the world and see how fucking beautiful men can be and then come back to this shitty shell of a boy. Yeah, you've done your time now, Andy, mate. Nobody will blame you. You have no idea what you're yeah. talking about. Don't I? What did you do, Doug? The fireworks were awesome. Except for the one that went in my eye. What happened to you? I thought you tried to kill yourself. Well, who tries to kill himself with a firework? I know. I said, no. You're just a stupid crackhead. with shit for brains. Mm -hmm. And I told them you couldn't commit suicide because you'd have no scars to show off afterwards. But they did say you got hurt. So wh why'd you come? I don't know, Doug. I was asleep on the kitchen table, and then the hospital called me, so now I'm here. Why have you got mud all over your legs? Uh, because I drove halfway, and then the car got stuck in the mud. What, what do you mean? I mean, I drove halfway, and then the car got stuck in the mud. The, the car got stuck in the mud? Yes! What, 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 what do you mean? Where, where's the mud between the, the hospital and your house that you could get stuck in? Shut up. <laughs> there is mud. On the side of the road. You veered off the road? Are you drunk? No. It's the windshield. It's all jacked up because Brad hit a tree last February. And, and there was a mist or a fog or whatever. So I couldn't see. And I had a few vodkas, but mostly I slept them off. So d d did you just leave your car? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because you know how I get. How you get? Fuck off. You know how I get when you're hurt. Well, the doctor says I'm going to be blind in one eye. Doug, I... <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want you to come in here. You probably can't smoke in here, can you? Will you touch it? What are you talking about? God, stop being weird. No, you've always been able to mend my wounds. Oh, great. I'm glad I've been of service. And I am going to smoke in here, because <laughs> what are they going to do? Look, I know it's probably a superstition, but I, I'd, I'd need you to do it. Will you just touch my eye? No, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I've never done these things. I've never always done these things, and I'm not going to do it. What are you doing? Look, you'll do it. You'll touch it. You will. 
But the pills only last so what? God, so don't long. Don't stop look, doing what, once that. The pills wear off. It's gonna fucking kill again. Stop doing that. Look, will you, Lini? I just need you to help me out, okay? Will you just touch my eye? No, I will not. And I, I, I really can you cover it back up because it can't be hygienic, and I really don't want look, to see it. You can make it better. No, I can't. Will you just leave me alone? Look, look, just, 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 just touch it once. No. I will not. I am not here to take care of you. I'm not a healer, Doug. Look, I'm in pain. Do you understand that? I don't care. Well, then go. Get out. Fuck off. What? Nothing. No, not nothing. What? Why don't you just offer to blow out his hair <laughs> and give him a hand massage, for God's sakes? Well, acting all crazy isn't going to help the situation. Who's acting crazy? Listen, I work in a bureaucracy. You're not going to get anywhere chewing out some low-level yes ma'am. I've been here for almost an hour. Look, all I'm saying is that when you're dealing with a bureaucracy, there's all. certain things. All. All you're saying. All is not a plural, it is not a possessive. There is no such word as alls, just all. You just said ain't two seconds ago, but I ain't allowed to. It makes perfect sense. I said ain't for emphasis. You just speak bad it's English. Like a little thing with you lately. No, it's not every little thing. Can we just... Let's just get our arms around the here and now. Figure out where Jay's at and not, you know, rehash the last seven years of our relationship. Would that be okay? Sure. Good. And I never forced you to make him fit in. Whatever. I let you call him Jamal, didn't I? Let me. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Listen, baby, I love your Irish people and all, but I simply was not going on life with the son named... What was it you were putting on at the table at the time? Seamus. Hell no. I'd have gone with something else. Liam, Aidan. You may not remember, but in Arabic, Jamal oh, wait, means... Oh, it means beauty. How could I forget? It's a great name. Sure, what's not the love? Hey, beauty, want to come kick some football? Can't wait till he's 18 so me and the guys can head down the tavern and hoist a glass of whiskey with all beauty. Is your sense of masculinity really that delicate? Of course not, Kenny. It's just a hell of a fun button to push. His name's fine. You can't even say it half the time. It's always J this, oh, J that. Come on, I have a nickname for my son. It's a, it's a male bonding thing. <laughs> just admit it. Man up and admit it. You've always hated his name because it's too black. You just said Seamus was too Irish. You think his name's a handicap? You know what? A scale from Will Smith to what? LeBron James? Jamal? is brushing right up against LeBron. <sighs> Must be terrible feeling so alienated from your own flesh and blood. Hey, I challenge Hell's Furies for that kid. You know that. Nay, would I was so angered with the same oh, hateful hands to tear such loving words, injurious wasps to feed on such sweet honey and kill the bees that yield it with your stings. I'll kiss each several paper for amends. Look, here is writ kind Julia. Unkind, Julia, as in revenge on thy ingratitude. I throw thy name against the bruising stones, trampling contemptuously on thy disdain. And here is writ, love wounded Proteus, poor wounded name. Thy bosom as a bed shall lodge thee till thy wound be thoroughly healed. And thus I search it with a sovereign kiss. But 
twice or thrice was Proteus written down. Be calm, good winds, blow not a word away till I have found each letter in the letter. Except mine own name, <laughs> that's some whirlwind bear, into a ragged, fearful hanging rock and throw it thence into the raging sea. Lo, here in one line is his name twice writ. Poor, forlorn Proteus, passionate Proteus. To the sweet Julia, that I'll tear away. And yet, I will not sit so prettily. He couples it to his complaining name. Thus will I fold them one on another. Now kiss, contend, do what you will. What you got there? Jane Eyre. Any good? Not really. Read your newspaper, Oscar. Oh my God. What now? <laughs> He's done it. Who's done it? Done what? <laughs> Fuck. Oscar? Lord Byron. Like he swam the Hellespont. Yeah, all right. I don't care. This, this changes everything. Does it? Well, I, I put it all to bed, hadn't I? Had you? I'm going to do it now. By this time next year, I will have swum the Hellespont. You're an idiot. Come with me. What? Marry me and come to Greece. What do you mean? Look, if you're my wife, then you can come with me. Oscar, no. Why not? Look at the shellies. They go everywhere together. Yeah, they're all so batshit mental, Oscar. It's a ridiculous suggestion. I mean it. I, I don't know what it means for you to mean it. Well, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? It, it means, Oscar, that you meant it when you said you were going to be a great poet. And well, now, do, do yes, you see what I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah, well, I never found my idiom before. Your idiom? But this could be what I need. It's an idiom, Oscar. It, <laughs> you don't have to go looking for it. It's not the fucking G-spot. Most people just have one, okay? Or, or they create one as they go along. But you got to put the fucking work in. Okay, well that's a little rich coming from you now, but whatever. You really think Lord Byron is a great poet because he swam the hell spawn? He just got on with doing the fucking poetry bit. It's either Greece or it's Yorkshire now. And either you can come with me or get used to the fact that I'm not going to be around to entertain you for very much longer. Oh, you really think that's what I want? To, to be your wife, to be your literal captive audience? You really think that's a proper use of my time? It's incredibly offensive for you to go on wildly making life-altering propositions like that, Oscar. What life? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a question from the floor? Seriously? <laughs> what life? I'm trying to save you here now. Oscar, really, there is so much wrong with that statement. I love you now. But you seem to think you're the only one here capable of being patronised. What would you be missing? Lounging about, reading middle-class, middle-brow, middle-of-the-road novels. That's not fair. Life isn't fair. Your life isn't fair, and so excuse me if I occasionally fantasise about ways in which I might be able to help my very best friend to live a life that's worthy of her. Watching you piss your life away is not a life that's worthy of me. Oh, you've been doing a grand job of that so far. Oh, fuck this! No, oh, and Jane here is in the middle of the fucking road, okay? No one's gonna swim the fucking hell spawn over it, but for the first time in my life, I read these pages and I see someone like myself written down and that is fucking meaningful, okay? Okay? Yes, okay, fine, Jesus! <sighs> Happy Alive Day! Alive! Uh, is that a real day? Should I have got you a card? It's today, and the next day, and also the next, and for however long we have left. Don't... Oh. Say it. What? Say what? That's it. Don't, don't say that, and don't say passed over, or gone. I won't. Don't say it. For however long we have, comma, we are going to celebrate being alive. Alive! Uh, 
I need to take a shower. I've made all of your favourite foods, all of them. You will never have to eat a mouthful which you think is mediocre. Alla, please stop. This is making me uncomfortable. And I've booked your favourite band for this evening. What? Shit, that's... I know, alive! You've booked Oasis! Why Oasis? Well, they are my favourite band. I thought... No, it's fine. It's fine. No, that's not a problem. I can, I Since can change that. Since I was a that. kid! I just never... Never mind. I've got some drugs. Uh, drugs? I've got so many drugs. Uh, we don't do drugs. We've never done drugs. We're not the type of people to do drugs. We could start with some coke. I'll, uh, I don't want to do drugs. If it mixes with my medicine, it could be really... Oh, hey, hey. We don't worry about things like that on a live day. I've got pills and weed and meth. Lots of weed, in case you weren't feeling it, because, you know, like, it is... Quite a it is quite a quite a big drug. Yeah, teeth fall out. And, uh, and I like my teeth. I like your teeth too. Alla, I I just want calm and to sit and to maybe drink a tea. I'm gonna go take a shower. No. I'll just be a moment. Don't. <laughs> just calm my mind. Can I come? For a shower? Yeah. Or just stay here. Or I could just sit outside the door. Alla. I don't want to waste a minute. I don't want you to do any living without me there. Please stay. Stay. Okay. I will stay. I won't take a shower. I mean, don't go ever. We'll make it not me. I would. Well, hold. Hold me. I am. Stop thinking about it. I'm not. Don't think about it. I'm not. <laughs> you are. I can tell. I don't know how. Think about anything else. What else? I could have done things better. You did things great. Uh, did? Did. No past tense. I'm Sorry. doing. I am here. I am present. I am here. You are here. Look, we could just stay here like this. Until? Until just us. There's nobody looking. Nobody sees as I head towards the shop that I've not been inside now for nine whole months. <sighs> it's warmer than it usually is at this time of year and I'm, I'm starting to regret the decision I made to, to wear a coat. I'm wearing it as a kind of disguise. I tell myself over and over again, like, like a kind of prayer that I know where I'm going. I've been here before. I get my bearings as soon as I can uh, and I try to check if they've altered the layout of the shop since the last time I was here because that happens sometimes in supermarkets, doesn't it? They haven't. I know where I'm going. <laughs> I push past an old man who's blocking the aisle looking at the ingredients of a breakfast smoothie. <laughs> I try to say, excuse me, please, but I can't seem to speak properly so I just push him to one side which takes him by surprise but... I've got no choice in the matter. And I get to where I'm going. And I reach up to the glass and the liquid and the liquid and the glass. It is February. It is Monday. It is 12 minutes to five in the afternoon. The place where the carotid arteries in the front of my neck meet the vertebral arteries in the back of my neck is called the circle of willies. At that moment, at, at that precise moment in the movement of time, a, a weakness in those arteries causes the blood between the covering of my brain and the brain tissue to hemorrhage. I try to speak out, to, to, to call for help, but I can't. I can feel the sick rising in the back of my throat and, and I try to hold it down. I do, I try, but in just a few minutes, I'm going to die. At the moment when I die, I want to know where my children are. 
at the moment that I die. I remember the taste of the ginger biscuits that my mother used to make <laughs> and how the bits of biscuit got caught in the gaps between my teeth. <laughs> I'll remember my mother and her smell. I remember the colours in her eyes and the way the light fell on her face on the day that she left home. For one clear moment when I die, I will see exactly what happens to the rest of my family for the rest of their lives and the rest of the town and the rest of the country, and of the whole world. And there'll be nothing I can do to stop it. Do you ever feel blank? What? It's just blank. Well, I mean, I feel washed out when my fake tan's worn off, and I'm overdue a brow tint. Like... Like you've wanted to say so much, like you've felt so much and you didn't say it and now the tank's empty. Not really, no. Like you wanted something so bad that you, you fought for it, you pushed for it, you took shit for it, you kept quiet for it and then it's not what you thought it was and you left. Drifting. Wondering how you ever ended up there. Zara, have you taken something? Only a moment to think. Not even think, just be. Look at me. Zara, look at me. Where have you gone? I don't know. Do you need to see a doctor? I don't know. Did you need to smash something? I don't think so. Do you want a hot vimto? <laughs> Maybe. I'm sorry. I'm not now. I am. Shh. I was just trying. Trying your best. It wasn't enough. Yeah, is anything ever? It's a bit fucking dark. Sorry. <laughs> Imagine if Dad could see us now. <laughs> It'd say, shape yourselves, the there's shit to, to do. do. <laughs> yeah. How did he do it on his own for all them years? He had you. I wanted to protect you. I know. You don't need protecting. Just don't listen. Well, I think it runs in our blood. <laughs> it's nice you tried, though. I miss him. Me too. Please don't. This feels like you're punishing me. I'm not trying to. So are you angry with me? No! No, I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I, I must be, I suppose. I'm I'm angry at this. This everything. I I hate it. We can try again. No, no. I can't bear it. Sorry. There it is. Should we should we stay together? Do you think or should we uh, I don't know. N not. I'm not saying this because I, I want to break up. I, I don't know what I want. I just, I think it would be a good opportunity for us to, you know, talk, have a conversation. You know what I'm saying. Please no. fucking help me out here. I know what I want. No. No, we should, we should take some time because right now I don't even want to look at you. Because I need you to put your arms around me, but you, you're not. And please don't, not now. Not because I'm telling you to. I don't want that. Sorry. Fucking apologising. You don't know, do you? What you're apologising for. So, so I, I, I just need some space. Space? Fucking space. 
Yes! Why are you repeating things I'm saying? I'm just trying to, to get my head around things and trying to understand and trying to... Fucking get your head around things. Yes! Uh, and I'm sorry that... I love you. I, I don't know what you... I don't know what you need, but... I, this, this is difficult for me too. Oh, fuck! Oh, it is. I am I need not some clues. You dare put that no, on me. I need, cause I need clues because you're standing behind a glass wall right now. A fucking uh, a sheet of glass and, and I can't reach you. Don't cry, for fuck's sake. Fuck. Look, it's okay. It is. There are people that go through this all the time. Through time, real problems. We could, we could try again. If that's what we wanted. Yes, it is. Yes, I don't know. I feel like I've had my skin peeled off. I kissed someone else at work. The new girl. Temp. I didn't tell her about you. I didn't say that I, that I had it. She was nice to me. She's actually nice to me. And she kissed me and I didn't stop her. <laughs> I just want to say, I don't always do this. <laughs> Bring someone back and that the day I meet them. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a massive stack of them in the wardrobe or nothing. <laughs> Shh. Sorry. My dad gets up in an hour. It's early. I know. Fuck that for a packet of quavers. <laughs> well, you've got to take work where you can get it. Where do yours work? They. Are they retired? Uh, no, they're not retired. <laughs> I'm going to smoke. Do you want one? Uh, uh, no, you're all right. Oh, you sis. don't smoke? No, you see, my parents, they both, you know. Oh, sizes. I'm sorry. It's all right. You want to know? Oh, going on about jobs. Fucking hell, Alice Moon! I'm really sorry, I do this. It's fine, it was a long time ago. Uh, I've been the right can of worms. Look, we don't have to talk about it, we can just... No, no, no. it's fine. Let it found out he had it right after Mum found out she was having me. Held on long enough to see me, though. Love this fishing, she said. Mad about... And then Mum was just last year, 19th of April. It's funny, really. He'd smoked all his life, right from when he was little, but mum, she never went near them. Always thought they were funny. What was she like? It's, it's okay. I don't have anything I can compare it with, but I can imagine it's really... Let's change it up a bit. <laughs> Come on, why don't you ask me something? Like what? Anything. Come on, what do you want to know? Uh, <laughs> do you work? Have you got a job? I do, yeah, and it's... um. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I work at a cafe <laughs> and I'm shit at it, but you know, money's money. My dancing, I love, but you know, that's not very practical. I'd love to like be able to teach it to little kids, but again, that's a bit, that's a bit optimistic. Yeah, I don't, I don't know really. I don't know. What, what, what about you? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? I want to be a dad. What? Uh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. But it's just um, people don't normally normally say that. No, why is uh, why is that the thing? Why I, is that the case? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just thought you know I was quite lucky with mum, and <laughs> for a while now I thought I, I could I could be that person. You know, I want to be that person to look after, and I just really want to have kids. You can have mine. <laughs> I'm full of it tonight. <laughs> it's the wine. <laughs> it's the wine. Okay. I promise you see me here now. I, I'm not an alcoholic or anything, but you see me heading towards that Echo Falls. <laughs> put a straight jacket on me. I just think that's wonderful. Really, yeah. that's, that's really, really lovely. There you go. Maybe it's fucked up. Maybe I'm fucked up. Because that shouldn't be the only thing that I want as a woman. To be beautiful. To be considered beautiful. But I do. 
And actually, I don't think that's fucked up. I think that's okay. I think it should be okay to want to be looked at or seen as beautiful. But maybe I've been doing it in the wrong way. Doing it for others rather than myself, but there's really no other way to look at it apart from in reference to someone else. Because every time I think back to my childhood, all these memories come up of things that I didn't realize were fucked up or didn't realize what they meant at the time. These words been flung at me like fishy or drop lip. And those weren't terms of endearment or compliments. Those were cusses, straight out ways to make people like me, little black children, little black girls feel like shit, feel ugly because of the size of their lips. So when I was 16 and I saw Kylie's new lips, I couldn't help but feel a sense of indignation. More than that, I couldn't help but feel like I want to knock her lights out. That if I watched her suffer, if I watched her die, there's a tiny bit of me that would maybe rejoice or maybe not rejoice, but just stand there and look for a minute maybe even finish her off myself. I'm ordering myself down. I have thought of fucking killing her. Otherwise this, I wouldn't have tweeted any of this shit in the first place. Am I violent? Fine. You want to engage with a fucking misogynistic dialectic? Go ahead. Great. No skin off my nose. Fabulous. Betray your sex. I will. Or put on a bloody miniskirt and bend over for the camera. Aye, aye, Captain. Don't come crying to me when everyone gives more of a shit about what lipstick you're wearing than what's coming out of oh, your mouth. Oh, for fuck's sake. What? You're doing my head in. And you have responsibility not to be a sex object on news night. I bet you're the type of guy that asks a girl if it's okay to kiss her before he kisses her, aren't you? <laughs> I don't see how that's... I mean... Wait, what the fuck? I bet you shave your fanny. Yeah, well, whether I shave my fanny or not isn't relevant, James. It's, it's not a political issue. <laughs> yes, it is. Of course it is. Why do you do Didn't it? Didn't say I did. Oh, do you? What? Shave. Yeah. All of it. All of it? All of it. Okay. So why do you do it? I do it. You do it because the expectation of the male gaze creates a fascistic body image, whereby grown women are supposed to look like fucking prepubescent girls because sexual exploitation hasn't gone away. It's just been repackaged, no, served up on a girl power plate. Do you want to like Actually, speak? it's the same as it always has been. And if you don't present your hairless form for our viewing pleasure, you're dismissed as some form of man-hating, hennaed, hemp-weaving, hippie throwback who wants to die alone in a flat full of cats she calls her babies. And that's why you do it, right? Right? Actually, I do it because it makes my orgasms feel amazing. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. You see what I mean, though? Half of the stuff that comes out your mouth is just wrong. Oh, so you agree with the other half? No, but what I'm saying... So you agree the other half makes sense? No, what I'm saying is so that... which half is it? If you don't already know, then I don't think I can tell you. <laughs> Emma, come in, sit down. How are you? Fine. Good. You still have your friends and your colleagues? <laughs> my friends and my colleagues? Yes. My friends and my colleagues? Yes, thank you. Good. I want to talk to you about Darren Glenister. Okay. Do you know Darren? Yes, he works in my office. <laughs> and would you say that, by your definition, he is a colleague? Yes. But not a friend? 
Sorry, I don't want to be rude. Oh, of course. I don't want to be rude, but I don't have to tell you who my friends are, do I? There's nothing in my contract <laughs> about that. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 but of course, you are quite right. I was just making conversation. Oh, I see. Oh, that's fine. What did you want to ask me about Darren? Do you think you work well with him? Yeah. Good. And there's nothing you'd want to tell me about Darren? No. I see. It's just that <laughs> Darren has come to see me and he has told me that you went out for dinner. Did he? Yes. I see. So, is there anything you would like to tell me? No. Oh. Are you sure? <laughs> bearing in mind what Darren has said. Uh, bearing in mind what we discussed before. I don't know why Darren told you he went for dinner. Oh, so are you saying you didn't go out for dinner? No, no, I'm not saying we didn't go for dinner. I'm mm. saying I don't know why he told you we went for dinner. Or he said he thought it was romantic. If we had done anything romantic, mm. I would tell you, as we discussed, as is in my contract, but as far as I'm concerned, I've never done anything romantic with Darren Glenister. All right. I would tell you if anything were to happen. Mm. All right. Well, I will have Darren back in and I will tell him that you said you thought it wasn't romantic. We'll see what he says. I'm sure we can come to some kind of consensus on it. Thank you. Is that all? Yes. Oh, and Emma. Yes. I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention any of this to Darren. <laughs> we don't want to muddy the water. You don't want me to talk to him about it? Not about any of this, no. I think that's best at this stage to keep it all clear until it's all sorted out. Are you going to talk to him about it today? Possibly. <laughs> that's all. Thank you. So how many women have you slept with? What? How many women? Just curious. Well, well I, I don't know. You don't know? No. Well, you men kept a list. A list? Yeah. Ooh, what do you mean a list? Well, I just thought you probably had a bit. Oh, wh down. what a thing to say. Well, what kind of guy do you think I am? I'm sorry. List. So how many? Nine. Nine. No. <laughs> then you do keep a no, list. No, I just remember. Rudy. Oh, come on. It's not that hard to remember nine, is it? It's nice and round. Okay, all right. It is written down somewhere, but it's not a list. Uh-huh. It's a nine. Right. Good number. Mm -hmm. Experience, but not promiscuous. <laughs> Wordly, yet selective. I see. <laughs> what about you? Me? Yeah. How many men have you been with? Oh, about the same, I guess. The same? Yeah. Yeah, nine or ten. Ten. Yeah, I mean, I haven't got it written down anywhere, but it's around that. Ten. What's wrong with ten? Oh, it's quite a few, don't you think? Well, you just said it was a good number. Experience. Yes, that was list. nine. Nine's a good number. Boy, ten. Hoo -hoo! It's one more than nine. What's wrong with it? Does it, does it make me a bad person? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Yeah, it's active. <laughs> it's very active. But I don't see how nine for you can be experienced and ten for me is active. You don't see that? I don't see that. How can you not see it? I don't see it. Okay, all right. I'm going to be very open with you, all right? All right. Okay, now there's a lot of people, not me, mind you, but a good portion of the population that think, you no, know, ten for a woman is active and, and ten for men is so in his wild oats. Mm. It's coming of age. Yeah. Tell me something. What? These people, mm -hmm. do they still hunt for food with sharpened sticks? I'm being serious here. Well, do you think that's a sexist attitude? Yes, I, I do, and it completely <laughs> sickens me, but it's the will of the people. <laughs> don't know about you, Rudy. You're pretty old-fashioned for a young guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> just happen to like my woman on that side of the tent. Uh, <laughs> Experience-wise, you know, personal preferences, that's all it is. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you.
I wondered whether my husband would be in a fine mood or a foul mood when he came home that night. And I hope foul. For at least that means a fight. At least that means a chance to scream at one another, which I myself find preferable to sitting in silence watching the wet wood smoke because you was right. There was a rain that night, only you'd not hold your breath waiting for him to admit it. And I looked up at the sky, which was very blue, with great round clouds, and I thought, I thought, I wish out of that sky would fall a man, a fine-looking man on a black horse, who would ride towards me and stop, comment on the weather, ask if there might be lodgings nearby, and that it'd all be a ruse. Because he'd just be looking at me. He'd just be looking at me. And we both knew that all this conversing was only an excuse so his eyes could linger on me they could devour me. That all he'd been placed on God's green earth for was to look at me in a way that, well, that's hard to describe, but if you did it in a church, you'd burst into flames. That sort of look. Be decent, this look. Put a bloom on the jam, this look. And as he was looking, I hoped my shawl would slip off my shoulder. He'd take off his hat and say, That's too hot a day for housework. I was going to bathe in the river. Will you join me? And I'd show shock. Speak of my husband, who would be home soon with a thrashing for the both of us, but he'd give me no choice. A smile. Pull me on the back of his horse, take me down the wild fennel at the bottom of Nixie's field, and fuck me hard. And I wanted, I wanted, I Wanted, I wanted, and this wanting rose up round me like boiling milk, like boiling clouds. And then out on the horizon, I saw a streak, so I waited. That streak became a smudge. A smudge became a thumbprint. That thumbprint became a smear. That smear became a swarm. An overing swarm, which became a mechanical, which became a man. A man, a man, a man who rode towards me, flung his legs over his horse, and before both boots hit the ground, I knew I was adrift and I would do whatever he asked of me. Why do they even keep this place? It's absolutely falling to bits. Probably costs more to do it up than it does to close it off like this. <laughs> you can just imagine them all in here, can't you? Just rocking. <laughs> Oi. Come travelling with me after this. What? I, I barely know you. Don't be so practical. Oh, be romantic. That's not romantic. That's insane. So what do you want to know about me? Nothing. Nothing? You're very interesting, just... I don't feel what I'd feel in real life. Oh, this is real life. The doctor said the antidepressants oh. are designed to stimulate certain dopamine. It's fake. You think this is fake? Yes! Yeah, I do! I like your laugh. I like your laugh. It's sexy. Men like it when women laugh. It shows the dominant. In my fuck. You laugh when something's funny. You don't. It's a social thing. It says, I'm clever, I get the joke. <sighs> or to show you're attracted to someone. Uh, well, uh, that's not why you laugh, okay? I do drugs, and there is not a single drug in this world that can make you just find someone attractive. Yes, there not is. Not look at them first or not smell well, them. Well, that's pheromones, things. isn't it? Is there no mystery for you? It takes work. You don't really believe all that. <laughs> I just think it comes and goes. So you take drugs, like proper ones. Sometimes. You? No. It's just about trying something new. Sure. It's only new once. 
then it's essentially a way of distracting yourself. From what? Mm, from the fact that you and everyone you love is going to die. Good. I'm really glad I'm distracting myself from that. Like, why <laughs> are you going travelling? I've got to, to, to see things, to meet people, to have my mind expanded. What? Nothing. <laughs> Look at this square meter. There's a whole world there. It's just about what you notice. <clears throat> Why would someone put a mosaic on the floor of a mental asylum? Maybe it wasn't a mental asylum when it was built. Or maybe they just thought mental patients really like looking down. See, all you can get from one square. <laughs> yeah, that would have worked. Except for one thing. What? You wouldn't be near in the first place if it wasn't for me. Come travelling with me. I don't know you. Oh, how do you know anyone? Wh when you trust them. When you've spent time with mm, them. When you, you've talked about it. You have come into a mental asylum with me at night time. You trust me. Look, I'm going to the fucking Taj Mahal, right? The greatest testament to love ever ever built. Have you got that in your square meter? I'll go first then, yeah? Well, I moved here because I was born at that hospital across the road. You know, it was either bring me back home or leave me on the back of MacDonald on Archway Roundabout. Turns out, Mum was going to fuck off anyway. Well, maybe she should have done that. I've got some free fucking food. <laughs> what about you? Everyone moves here. That's why. Everyone's dumb then. Don't change the fact. Everyone ends up here. You either settle down, pop out some kids in your shitty little town, or... Move to London. No, I reckon doing both sounds more fun. Do you want kids? Nah, man. What? I just like getting laid, innit? Huh? It's an easy place to start again. You're making millions, Mr. Big City, man. You know, tell your little <laughs> friends and leads how well you're doing. Yeah. All going to plan, anyway. No, if I could start again. It wouldn't be round here. Where else is there? Yorkshire sounds nice. Hills and shit. Yeah. What are you complaining about? You've got Finsbury Park, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you skint, everywhere's the same. Leeds, London, everywhere. Yeah, don't look like you're going skint anytime soon, Mr. Suit and Tie Man. Oh, yeah, uh, TK Maxx. It will change your life. Yeah, not my style. I can't see the hoodie and jeans hanging around your ass. Look, help you much in interviews. Yeah, that depends on what interview. It's a promising career you have there in GBH. An intent to supply. I didn't GBH no one. That's not what it says in your record. Or the Fed stitch me up. Bit of a cliche, that. Joint enterprise. You weren't me who hit the lad. You just watched. What? You reckon me doing something would have helped? What, you reckon I wouldn't have got a pasting like him? He lost an eye. He's a grass. He lost an eye. Then maybe he shouldn't be grassing, should he? Bad for business in your line of work. Grasses. And you, you don't see. I see perfectly. Mm. Unlike that poor cunt. You and your mate. I didn't do fuck all to that kid. You were shutting on the estate. Yeah, everyone shots in the estate. Does that make it all right then? <laughs> It's your job, innit? How much you bank doing that shit? How much time have you done in Felton? <laughs> Touchy. Uh, look, I'm not saying I don't feel bad for what happened to the kid, you know. His eyes or whatever. But, you know, I've done my time. I've said my sorries. I'm just trying to move on, innit?
move on to what? This. Life. Now, maybe you can get me out of here and I, I can do that. I'm trying. Well, try harder. Seriously, what are uncles good for? Do you, do you remember that time you were late dropping me off the football? I missed the game and what did I say? I forgave you, uncle. I come for you enough times, you're my favorite uncle. But now it's my rough times, I see that you're changing, uncle. I'm at your door and you're clocking me like I'm a stranger, uncle. What, want me to get on my knees, see me beg, see me crumble, is that it? Ah, oh, fuck this, you used to be more humble, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I admit I am a virus, but you're proper fungal. I got some shit on you, uncle, and I'ma give you a lungful. I know you got gentle herpes. Auntie told my mum. Oh, and I know that auntie's banging that man from church, uncle. <laughs> I know you lost your job for laundering, yet carried on getting dressed up as if you're going to work, uncle. But there's this dodgy flat I used to go to buy my skunk, and I saw you hanging outside it looking disgruntled. I'd watch you go inside and after like hours gone, I see you come out with your sleeves rolled up, your tie off and your shirt crumpled. I'd watch you roam the streets and your eyes are sunken and every now and then you shudder, smile and grumble. I see you slide down the wall and fall asleep in the slump. That is, until you were approached by a police constable. They throw you in a meat wagon and I know what you've done. Because surely afterwards they raid the place and everyone comes up with charges and somehow you get none. Which means not only did you open your mouth, you sung. And if I were them, I'd hold them down and I'd cut out your tongue. I don't associate with snitching. I don't know why I come. No, you can keep a fucking sofa because it smells like a bum. Think I need your help. Think I need anyone. No, I'm gone. I don't like it when you tell that story. I don't like to think about you going through it again. I only got through it because I knew what was waiting for me at the end. Don't, Ray. You and the kids. And the angels. Please, don't do this. Do you know, I used, I used to close my eyes and I could see you. I could see you bathing them. I could smell the baby oil in the skin. And it was like it was cleaning me of all this dirtiness and this ugliness that I'd seen. Shh. Please, come with me, Carla. I can get it sorted. <laughs> if you're with me, I'd have a reason to. If it were just about me, then maybe, Ray, but, but what about the kids? I'm not dragging them halfway across the country so they can watch you drink your scent to death, batter me off in the process. I can't stay here. I can't go to prison. Your angels. They were never a good enough reason for you to stay, were they? Even when all your mates were at home with their babbies, nah, you'd still be wandering them streets on your own. Good old Donny, though, you weren't on your own for too long, were you? There was always someone you could drink with, fight, fuck. I never cheated. Oh, don't make a liar of yourself. You know, it was almost a relief when you stopped being interested in me. You always fucked me like you hated me. No, I never hated you, Carla. I hated my life. I came back and it felt like it didn't fit me properly, like I'd grown out of like it. Like you'd grown out of me. I've seen people whose whole lives are about trying to put food in the gobs, trying not to get blown up. How'd you go from that to watching X Factor with a plate of Chinese on your knee? How do you do that month after fucking month? How would you face a thought of dying when you've never fucking lived? Because most of us, Ray, don't need to feel threatened to be living. The TV, takeaway, the kids, it's enough. Then why are you here? Pissed up in the middle of the week with your kids dumped on someone else because you're bored, Carla. You know, I almost start to feel sorry for you and you remind me of what an arsehole you actually are. I'm not getting at you, I'm asking you. Sometimes, Ray, I do get bored. I get bored of the struggle. I get bored of talking to the kids. If there was ever a day I made it look easy, it's because I was scared you weren't going to come back. Not that it wasn't a struggle. I'm an idiot, Carla. Yeah? You're the one good thing I ever had in my life. And I lost sight of it. I let all this shit fill my head. You know, I have this, um, I have this dream about getting this locket to you. It's only important thing getting this locket to you. But when I open my fist, do you know what's there? No. Fuck all, Carla. My palm is full of nail marks. But do you know what you say when I tell you? 
No. You say, Ray, sweetheart, I don't own a locket. Well, I don't. I know. It's not the point. What is the point then? I don't know. There, mother. Mystery over. Don't call me that. Why shouldn't I call you mother? Mother? Does it make you feel old? <laughs> hate me now? Why do you want me to hate you? Don't. But you will in the end. They all do. Not me. I'm in love with you. Why? You're difficult, moody, cynical, bitter, fat, decadent, spoilt. You stay in bed all day and watch TV all night. You're in pain. I adore you. Not very logical. Love isn't. Will you be jealous? Of what? When your father comes home. What's that got to do with me? I've never been unfaithful before. Yeah, that much was obvious. Well, I'm sorry. I've had worse. I did it because I'm in love with you. Don't be. I don't like it. I want this to happen again. No, I do. you don't. I love you no. so much. You don't even know me. I wanted to see your face as you came. Why? I'd like to see you lose yourself. It's not a very pleasant sight. I want you to make me come. Oh, I can't stand post-coital chats. There's never anything to say. I want you. This isn't about me. I do. And fuck someone else. Imagine it's me. It can't be very difficult. Everyone looks the same when they come. Not when they burn you. No one burns me. No one fucking touches me. Don't try it. It's over now. Face it. Can't happen again. Why not? Wouldn't be about me. It never was. You can't stop me from loving Can. you. No. You're alive. Wake up. You burn me. Now you've had me go fuck someone else. Oh, you're just like your father. That's what your daughter said. Phaedra? See a doctor. I've got gonorrhea. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, jump up a bit more. Like, shake your tits. Look like this. I, I was. <laughs> Move your hips and make me want to fuck you. <laughs> Pepsi, Johnny, I'm good, but not that good. I doubt I'll ever make one to fuck me. Miracles have happened before. Aye, a miracle happens here every night. Yes, and we create those miracles. <laughs> now, now, it's not just us creating mm. those miracles. Madam does her fair share too. I'm going to put that new belly ring game we bought today. Talking of today. When we're out shopping, can you stop all this bumping into blokes and chatting rubbish? Look, I'm supposed to be keeping an eye on you. Don't make my life any more difficult. Belly ring. Well, in that case, Johnny, you should wax your belly because that won't do. Do you think it's that hairy? I thought I might get away with it. Did you now? Sit back. Oh, look, I know what you were up to today. <laughs> what? 
Well, when you're out shopping with me, can you just try and not sneak off? <laughs> ah, fuck! <sighs> Pepsi, Johnny, when was the last time you got a bikini line done? A couple of weeks ago. Hey, man, can't you be gentle? <laughs> like how you did. <laughs> Ouch! Hey, don't pull my knob off. My meat is destined for higher things in life. What, Ashraf's shitty bottom? <clears throat> there. You're done. Cheers, girlfriend. Uh, my Ashraf's bottoms is juicy and soft as a peach. You mean a shriveled peach. What do you even see in him? What do you mean? You know what I mean. I love him. A dirty old man. No different to the dirty old men you shag. <sighs> yes, but I'm not in love with them. Why is it you just jump up whenever Ashraf and Madam click their fingers? No, I don't. You think you're all high and mighty. Ashraf makes me feel real. I can be who I am with him. I don't have to pretend. Let's not argue. There's better out there for us. Just because you've been with Madam since you were 13 doesn't mean you've missed out on anything. Haven't I? Yeah. I've been out there. And the world is a bastard to the likes of you and me. Really, it is. Well, I'm not like you. <laughs> you are to the world. What world? The world of bells? Or the world of humans? Do you really think that this world is going to think you're some educated goody two-shoes? Or a two-bit whore who chose this profession? Well, exactly. Badgers. Bastards. Bastard. Never mess with a badger. I had a fight with a badger once. Right. So I'm coming in from Feather. Feather. And I take a shortcut across Fletcher's field and I stop in this opening. And there he is. This big lad. He's stripey. And I've seen him before because I'm good with faces. And now he's a knack. And he's brought two mates. Now, I'm a pretty good talker. I could talk my way out of most things. But they are not having it. You know, their backs are up. You know, you can, you can smell it coming. I've got no choice. And so, so I stand there, right? As big as can. And I bellows. Right! Let's have it, you strike me cunts! Big mistake. They, they, they were on me in a flash. You know, I was in bed for a month. I lost five pints of blood to it. And two toes. And now they should stamp them out. Badgers. But they better do the lot because I am here to tell you that a badger bears a grudge. Well, you will like it here. <laughs> You know, you'll get to learn to ropes. Just steer clear of Chagford and Ashburton. Absolute shithole. Eric? Fuck. Yeah, I'm here. You left the door unlocked. Is it what you thought it would be? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> it's just a house. Henry, do you think it's possible this house might be haunted? I mean, given everything that happened here, it, it this house is not haunted. I, <laughs> it's just I think I might have seen a ghost. <laughs> there are no ghosts in this house. It's just cold walls and low ceilings and barely enough light in the winter. Listen, Eric. Do you look for flaws in people the same way you look for them in houses? Well, houses hide their flaws better than people. Hmm. What are my flaws, Henry? You can't take a compliment. I don't think that's true. You undervalue yourself. Right, is that not the same thing? <laughs> you refuse to believe that you are beautiful. Uh, Listen, <laughs> Eric. I know how hard these last few months have been for you. Uh, yeah, and you have no idea how much you've helped me. I, I think, in fact, I do. 
because you've helped me just as much. And I, I've been thinking, mm. what role could we play in each other's lives going forward? You've been thinking that? I think about you more than you know. And I was wondering if, if you would want to marry me. My God, our friend Eric Glass speechless. You want to marry me? Yes. But why? You make me smile. Contrary to what most people think, I do like to smile. Well, I do think that you have a very nice smile. I'm glad you think so, because you've been the author of all my recent ones. <laughs> I, I want you in my life, Eric. I think I am in your life. No, no, I, I want you fully in it. I can provide you with the freedom to find meaning in your life. To become the man you're meant to be. Can I... Can I just think about it? Of course. It's just it's a big decision and you have just completely caught me off guard. You, you don't have to explain yourself, No, Eric. but I want to. No one's ever proposed to me before. I um, didn't realise how nice that felt. We should probably head back. We just got here. Yeah, I, I saw what I needed to see. I was hoping that we could go upstairs. I, I'd, I'd like to beat the storm. Joe, are you okay? Uh, Zhang Wei heard from Benny. He said you didn't show up to your dinner. He was very disappointed. Yeah? Well, I'm disappointed too. You know that name that you gave me? Well, I found his brother. Really? How is he? Well, he's not the fucking tank man, and he's not the fucking tank man's brother is who he is. Wang Pengfei was just a soldier, some soldier, some teenager who probably just he spent two days- He was a hero. He's not a fucking hero. He was on the side of the party. Side? How side? What does side have to do with anything? He, he was a good man. Even the party saw that. You know how they used your picture as a portrait of their humanity. Look, we went around him. Did you know you were in the propaganda business? But it wasn't them. It was Wang Pengfei, and I don't know what happened to him. His brother said he was shot. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I thought it was a good story, you know. Sometimes the uniform makes it much harder to be a hero and, and I thought you were interested in what happened that day. I was interested in the tank man. Yes, I misunderstood. Look, I, I'm sorry about Benny. I'll call him. How are you? A new couple moving to Michelle's apartment. They've got triplets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. You know, some old lady and some smog, you know, I... I... She was only 59. Okay. <sighs> well, I'm kind of in between things just now. You should come visit. Well, I don't have a visa and I couldn't get a work permit. Well, I could help you with that. Really? Sure. <laughs> I mean, I told you that. Or, you know, we could, uh, get married. <laughs> I'll think about it. How are you supposed to respond to condolences? Because I could tell you whatever I was doing wasn't it. I suppose it's about gravitas and sincerity. And that purse lip pouty mouthed expression you see people wearing around coffins will give me a break. All that stuff pissed me off. Spent most of the day wanting to hit someone. Anyone. Something else you're not supposed to do at a funeral. Went drinking after. Could have been a serial killer, but all the bouncers see is Armani. 
and I'm ushered into a series of people that look just like me, dress like me rather, because you can tell by their faces that they don't know a thing. All scrubbed with the kind of voices that make your scabs itch. Can't even remember what he says, but he speaks. Sounds like broken glass under your heel. And I'm standing there, looking at him. And I watched his sneer change shapes and the fist smacks into it. The movie version stops there, of course. Real life is all blood and snot. Punch and kick till I gasp him for a fag. Till I finally stop laughing. Well, I'm not as shy as some. I can't hear you. I, I, I said I'm not as shy as some. Like who? Hey? Like who aren't you as shy as? Well, well I don't know. <laughs> All sorts. Footballers? Well, I'm shyer than footballers. Nuns? Nuns. Well, I'd say I, I'm not as shy as some nuns, but it depends on the nun, doesn't it? Yeah, like the new nuns starting out who don't know the ropes. Yes, I I'm not as shy as them. No, we near as shy. Paraplegics? <laughs> well, well, I guess it depends on whether they were shy before they got in the accident, doesn't it? Good point. Or they were born that way and there wasn't an accident. Well, I reckon that if it were a, a mute paraplegic, I wouldn't be as shy as him or, or her if it were a, a girl mute paraplegic. <laughs> You're quite funny. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that yesterday. Did you? I suppose your sense of humour just goes over people's heads. <laughs> I don't know about that, but maybe. There's no maybe about it. It's hard to come across as funny when you're surrounded by stupid thicks. That's what I find anyways. I can always appreciate a good sense of humour. Although I don't come across as funny well, myself. I, I think Even when I try to come across as funny... I come across as menacing, which is ridiculous because I am nice. Well, I think you come across as funny. But do you know what I can't fathom about yesterday? No, what can't you fathom about yesterday? Do you or don't you know Phyllis Keene? Phyllis Keene. No, I don't actually. <sighs> Poor Phyllis. I mean, I have been sat here crying when there's nothing wrong and she is sat in a mental home because she read out car registration numbers. It isn't fair, is it? Why don't you go visit her? Cheer yourself up. I did think about that, but I don't know what the opening hours are and, and well, it's miles away. I'll drive you. Will you? Would you? If you like. I don't care, do I? But, but, but what if it's closed? If it's closed, it's closed. You can't do anything about it if it's closed. Can I help? I think I need a hand. A hand? Or something. Not a hand. I, I didn't well, We don't hand. do that here. <laughs> Sorry, no. Slip of the tongue. All that, unless you buy us dinner first. I'm joking. This is a clinic, not a brothel. Sorry, I'm going to start again. Please do. It's not working. What's not working? The stuff. The stuff? I can't seem to... You can't seem to get an erection. It's impossible, surely. In that room with the magazines and the pressure of the... Well, anyway, there's a sign on the wall that says to come and find someone if... If you have any problems, please contact a member of staff. That sort of means if... The door won't lock or if the light won't turn on or if right. or if you miss the cup or something. Okay. You haven't missed the cup, have you? No. Good, because I'm not paid enough to do with that. So. I haven't even come close to... It's just the stuff. Are you telling me you need gay porn? Because we don't do that either. No. Still considered niche. I don't need gay porn. Just something newer, maybe. This isn't Waterstones. I mean, anyway, most people just use their phones now, so... Okay, well, the problem with that is that my mum pays my phone bill and I don't know whether it's itemised or... If it, your mum pays your phone bill? Yeah. She bought me the phone years ago and I've never switched it over. Since? Since quite a while, yeah. Is she rich? 
Sorry, we're sort of getting off the point. Oh, I wish my mum paid my phone bill. Well, it means you can't use your phone to look at porn. Well, so. I don't look at porn. I think it's fundamentally demeaning to women. Okay, sorry. Can I just take the cup away with me, maybe? It doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm sure your mum will understand in the circumstances, surely. Well, she doesn't know, so... Your mum doesn't know what you've got? No. Why? She's got a lot on. Well, I think I would want to know if it was my son. It's not, though, is it? It's me, it's my problem, and I'll, I'll deal with it myself. Why? Because I can. Because I should, because I'm a man. Well, you know how that one ends, of them scraping you off the floor somewhere. I mean, trust me, I've seen it all. Tell someone or don't expect a happy ending. Speaking of which, you've got that room for another five minutes. People talk about guilt as if it's an instinct. That the second you do something wrong, you feel guilty. I don't. What I'm feeling is power. You always join the story at the bit where they're sorry, where they're desperately begging for forgiveness. But there's something before that. There's now, in the space after the act and before the consequences when you've got away with it. When you're walking out an unknown door, back down unknown streets and it's still thumping in you. Dawn's breaking, dew settling, and you're skipping home, flying on the thrill of it. You can taste it. Even back here, the quiet click of the door, you tiptoe in. The alcohol's wearing off too quickly. I want it back. Our bed and all the stuff that makes up life, our life. And I don't feel like a traitor. I can lie here whilst another man's saliva dries off my lips. Remember another man's face bearing over me and I enjoy it. I enjoy that all this feels new again. His alarm goes off in 10 minutes. He'll roll over and grunt and curl round me like a monkey with its bloody mum, just like every morning. He won't notice there's anything different. He won't notice that there's mascara down my face or that my hair's wet from running in the rain to get back before he wakes up. He won't notice that I haven't been here, that I'm drunk. No, to him, I became invisible a long time ago. Can we talk? Not right now. Why are you acting like this? I wanted to pay. You don't get it. And what is it I don't get? We live in completely different worlds. I'm not rich like you. Can't decide to be a baker for a living just because I like toast. Oh, that's a fucking mean thing to say. Yeah, well, sorry, but it's true. I wanted to do a nice thing. You never accept help from anyone ever because you're too proud. I wanted to do something nice. I don't need nice things. Oh, because you're so strong and above it all. You act like you don't give a shit about anyone, but really, it's just to keep people out. You've done it to Otis, and now you're doing it to me. I don't keep everyone out. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You're probably going to do the same thing to Isaac and end up hurting everyone. You don't want to talk? Well, look how you treat Steve. You act like he's got the plague every time he's around you, Amy. He's so confused. Because you're too much of a people pleaser to fucking break up with him. You talked about being brave. That would be brave. I'll pay you back somehow. I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> don't lie, no, you Steph, fucker! No, we're not going to do this again, okay? Oh, Just stop. Okay, so explain it to me, liar. Just not here, all oh, right? Not here! Not here! God. Oh. God, I'm there's so sorry. always this threatening tone in your voice when we fight. Maybe because you feel like a guilty fucking arsehole. Maybe that's, that's why. What for? You tell me, Greg, for once. Right, this is ridiculous. Harley was one of my very best friends, Greg. And who says we can't be friends? You. You sleeping in her bed at night. You know, that puts a real oh, fucking kink in the arc together, of our relationship. Okay, let's just be clear about that. We're dating. 
yeah, but it's not like we did this to hurt you. But like, Jesus, it's not like we planned it. She's not answering my calls, Greg, and it's because of you. Okay, you, I mean, fuck, I didn't see Ow, this one coming. What? What's the matter? We found each other long after you and Kent ever that in the picture. That is not the issue here. You are the issue here. Just fuck you, Greg, you fucking piece right, of Seth, fuck. <gasps> Don't touch me. Get I'm off not, me, you I'm prick. Not yes, you are. Get off me, you fuck. Just shouting. Just fuck right off. Do you hear me? Yes, Steph, I do. Helen Keller could hear you, so I'm pretty sure that I can. Who? Nothing. No one. Do you mean that little blind girl? Do you mean that Helen Keller? Yes. Why the fuck would you bring her up now? No, it doesn't matter. Well, see, it does matter. Because it bothers me when you say stupid shit, especially when you think it's smart stupid shit. So please, Greg, go ahead and explain yourself. She was deaf. That's why. Helen Keller was blind, Greg. Yeah, I know, but she was deaf too and dumb. What? Dumb. Her, not you, as in, you know, meaning unable to Anyway, speak. you are the one who has done something wrong here, not me. No, no, what I think is happening here, Steph, is a misunderstanding. That's oh, all. Oh, okay. So I hear that you're fucking one of my childhood best friends. So please tell me which part of that I'm not very good well, at it understanding. It just happened, okay? We haven't told anybody yet. And I think it's great that we've, you know, when two people are trying to connect and forge. <laughs> Fuck. What? What? I hope you don't talk to her like that. Look, it's I mean, just what a load of shit. Do you love her? It's a simple question, Greg. Tell me yes, and I'll go into that shop. You never have to hear from me again. I promise. And Kev's like, listen, F, I know I'm a prick, but I really think I could do this. I really think I could be a dad. See? And he hands me a roll of tenors, maybe 200 quid. He says, I've been down cash converters, I sold the Xbox games the lot for you and our family. And the thing is with Kev, like I know he's a person with feelings, but I don't think he is really. He's like some big ugly dog that no one wants, but no one can be bothered to drown. Next to him, I'm basically a goddess. And the idea of us getting together properly, a dog and a goddess, it just makes me want to laugh. <laughs> He says to me, I swear to you, everything, all I got for you and our baby, if you'll just please keep it. And I say there's one thing. I can't start with a lie. I say you can be this kid's dad. And you can live with him and love him and, and do all that. You've got to know. You're not the father. Kev says, sorry, what the fuck? I say it was the soldier from the Great Western, do you remember? He says, hold on, hold on, but me and you shagged that day, so it could be his, it could be mine. I say, I can't. Because me and you used a condom and I didn't with him. Kev goes, but you never. But you never let me do it without you. You did with some random guy. Fuck's sake, Kev, why? And I tell him the truth. Because I wanted him so much. I kept my eyes shut tight till I heard the door slam. What is it you like about bad men? I don't know. I like men who are tall and dark and smouldering. Oh, you mean you like brown hair? I like chivalry. <laughs> I like chivalry. But why can't it go both ways? Why can't women be chivalrous to men? Why do I always have to beat the outside of the spoon? Heathcliff. I like Heathcliff. Heathcliff hangs puppies. His son hangs puppies. Heathcliff hangs a dog. You're saying it like it's better. I don't like him because he hangs a dog. I just like him. Either way, your dog's getting killed. I don't actually have a dog. Do you want to tame these men from themselves? Is that the attraction? No. Do you want to save them? No. Oh, you want to change them. You think the more they change for you, the more it proves that they love you. No. If they change, they wouldn't be bad anymore, and I wouldn't fancy them. I suppose that's logical. Of course it is. You do know romantic fiction is the female equivalent to men watching porn. Are we comparing <laughs> Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights to porn? It creates some realistic expectations. Wanting Heathcliff is not like wanting women to have no body hair. It's the same effect. Women get waxed, men take up boxing. <laughs> you think you're a better feminist than me? Oh, I know I am. 
I'm the only woman on the news desk. I write stories about how austerity disproportionately affects women. I cover stories on abuse and equal pay. But you can't control what's in your heart. And in my heart, I like lipstick, oh. cupcakes, eat glitter. No, you don't. But I do. No, you don't. You just think you do because the world's very messed up. Well, what's the difference between the things I want, but only think I want, and the things I want that I shouldn't want, and the things I want that I can want? Seems pretty obvious to me. But then I don't want lipstick, cupcakes, Heathcliff. Okay. Can you drive? No. Carve? I'm a vegetarian. Of course. Tell me about your dad. My dad's got nothing to do with this. I've had time to think for myself. But he's not a feminist. He's old fashioned. He likes it when I wear a dress. He opens doors, but he's not oppressing anyone. Is he oppressing your mum? They're divorced. <laughs> Sorry. He thought they'd be married forever. And I'd marry an accountant, live in Hendon, and have <laughs> them over every Friday night. You could still marry an accountant and live in Hendon. All the accountants are married. I was just so desperate to not end up in the kitchen like my mum. I never learnt to cook. <sighs> you are a feminist. I have some incredibly distressing news. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anything. We've just run out of wine. What are we going to do about it? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. God. Look, I, I don't feel well. I, look, my, my, my thumbs have gone weird and, and my heart's beating like a fucked clock. I feel dreadful. I feel really dreadful. So do I. So does everyone. Eat some sugar, for Christ's sake. Where's the coffee? Have you been at the controls? What are you talking about? The thermostats. What have you done to them? I haven't touched them. Why has my head gone numb? Oh, I must have some booze. I demand some booze. Okay, it'll get better. It has to. That's easy for you to say. You've had an audition. Why can't I have an audition? I've been to drama school. I'm good looking. What happened to your agent? That's what I want to know. What happened to my agent? The bastard must have died. I don't know. Okay, it'll, it'll, it'll happen. Have you got soup? Have you got any more soup? Coffee. Why can't you use a cup like a normal human being? Why can't you wash up like a normal human being? No, 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 no. It's impossible, I swear to you. Hey, li hey, listen to me. There are things in there. Okay, there's a tea bag growing. You haven't, you haven't slept in 60 hours. You're in no state to tackle it. Just, just wait till morning and we'll go in together. This is the morning. Stand aside! No, you don't understand! I think there might be something living in there. I think there might be something alive. What do you mean? A rat? It's possible. Okay, it's possible. Why don't you ask your father for some money? If we had some money, we could go away. Why don't you ask your father? Hmm? Look, we've got to get some booze. It's the only solution to this intense cold. We can't go on like this! We're trained actors, for God's sake, reduced to the status of bums. I mean, look at us. No, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. Why not? Because I don't advise it. Even the wankers on the site wouldn't drink that. The wankers don't drink it, because they can't afford it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot, honestly. I didn't know I was like doing that. I didn't plan on doing that, I swear to God. There is something wrong with me. What do you think about when you like fantasize? Do you think about guys? Because, well, you know, I'm fucked up. I couldn't stay attracted to anyone for longer than four months. At first, I'm, I'm like this, like crazy nymphomaniac. <laughs> all I want to do is have sex all the time, like eight, nine times a day. And then it totally goes away. And I'm like this. Like a dead fish. And <laughs> I just fake it until we break up. And you know what's even weirder? It's like 
when I fantasize, I just like to think about myself. Yes, it's it's like everybody else is blurry except for me. I'm totally in focus, and I look amazing, and everyone else is like, "Holy shit, that girl looks amazing." That was really embarrassing. <laughs> We're late. We're fine. We needed to leave four and a half minutes ago. We're going to be late. Can you grab my coat? I got it. Thanks. You know, you don't have to come. Don't come. I want to. Yeah, but if you didn't, just say, because mum won't mind. <laughs> she will. Look, she always minds. Look, we're already late. Right. No, I want some fresh air. What are you wearing? Dungarees. Not dungarees. <laughs> they are. Alex, you're wearing your maternity clothes. I know, Rupert. Can you grab the car seat? Car seat? Yeah, it's in the nursery. What's car seat? <laughs> Teddy's. When did you... I ordered it. Oh. Well, you weren't going to. No, I would have. So I did it. I ordered it. Yes, but we don't need it. <laughs> Put it in the car and then we can get going. We don't need a car seat. We do. Alex. Are you going to do it or shall I? Because we can't leave it here. I won't leave this house Alex. without the car seat. Please, can you do it for me? We, we don't need a car seat. I want it with me. It's for Teddy. It's for... Please put it in the car. Rupert! Alex! Shout at me. Shout at me, Rupert. Go on, shout at me. I will. I will. I will shout and shout and shout until I get it into your head how awful you are being. Never have I met someone so selfie, so... I want so to have Teddy's car seat oh, in the Teddy's car! Teddy's dead! He's dead, Alex. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead, and he's not coming back. Teddy is dead. He is dead. That's the first time you've said his name. If it was a choice between you and Teddy, I'd choose Teddy. I know. I'd choose you. Have you moved things around? No, it's the same as the last time you'd leave. Right. George! <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I just wanted to feel what it's like to walk into a room and for you to be there. I, it's wonderful. I, I'd forgotten. Don't be silly, Rosie. How proud you must have been tonight. How, how proud I felt to be in your arms. To be a hero, George. Come sit. Come and dance. You're drunk. I know, and I'm delirious. Come on. Not now, Come Rosie. On. <laughs> Tibbs! Tibbs! George! George! <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Did I, did I ever tell you about my section, Ros? The, the Green How Arms? No, that's, that, that's a battalion. That's bigger than a section, Ros. I told you about them in the letters I used to... Remind me. Robbie Hebron was 15, lied about his age to get in. That's far too young. Arnold Potter, Potts, could do real sleight of hand magic. William Barker had this amazing voice. Terrible feet, though. Stuck the trench out. <laughs> And Greg Bowes had a baby girl, six months. That could have been us if you'd have had your way. Well, no, I'm glad we were. It's Tipsy. Uh, of course, Tipsy. He was the bloody best of the lot. I I'd like to meet them, George. Enough! Stop it! George? George? I'm fine. I'm sorry, Rose. I think... 
I just needed to say the names out loud. I don't know why. I love you. I love you too. Do we have any scotch? I just don't like that word. What word? You use it all the time. Who? Your friends, Laura and Becca and the other girls. What are you even on trying to talk about? On the bus, on the way to school. I don't know what you're talking about. You use that word about people all the time and you think it's okay. I truly, cross my heart, Joe. don't know what you're talking about because we're not even on the bus part yet. Freak. You called me a freak. I didn't. I didn't. Your mum did. Your friends do. And you wanted to in that last bit. I could tell what Joe was. I was just doing what happened. She's just my mum and they're just my friends, Joe. Yeah, great friends. They're smashing. I don't agree with them. You don't sit with me anymore. What? On the bus, on the way to school. You, you don't. I don't know what you're trying to do because we're not even on the but beat I yet. I can't help it. I can't help it if you not wanting to sit with me seeps in, Jess. Anyway, you sit with Ian and that, don't you? So. Backstory, okay? I'm gonna share an anecdote, something about my childhood, something that that explains me and why I am the way I am, you know, which is fabulous, but obviously very damaged. <laughs> we love a damaged woman, don't we? There's nothing more delicious than than a sexy woman molested by her uncle, am I right? You know what I'm talking about, you know. She wears her sexuality so obviously. It's a, it's a leopard print boob tube, synthetic skin. All present, all oozing, all meeting. The mothers of nice girls don't let their daughters play with her. And she's still that little kid. Made to feel worthless and dirty and she desperately, desperately needs you to save her. But alas, you cannot save her. <laughs> no one can. She is on a one-way ticket to self-destruction, which is probably for the best. Could you imagine living with Marilyn Monroe? Really? Vulnerability is fine. As long as there's an end point, otherwise it's just fucking annoying. Tell me that I'm pretty. Tell me that I'm smart. Tell me that you love me. Love me. Y'all want the warm fuzzies of trying to save someone without any of the responsibility. So here's, here's me being vulnerable, okay? The scared little kid behind the bitch facade, no longer an object of hate, but pity. I had a dog. Fucking strangest dog you ever saw in your life. Cause she had the worst case of ringworm the vet had ever seen, so she was bald. She had personality and you know what? I loved her. She had a fart on her that would stun a donkey, do you know, really. Do you know it's so ripe that you're watching TV and you can, like, taste it in your mouth? <laughs> and my father said, you know what, one of these days, Pearl, one of these days. And then, one of these days, he took her out by the collar into the backyard and he put three bullets into the back of her head. I mean, that didn't happen. That obviously didn't happen. But do I look vulnerable to you? Hmm? Did you want my father to kill my flatulent dog? <laughs> 